Today we look at paint mixing and we'll start with a value study which basically means going from white to black or black to white and these are the colors we're going to need. Burnt umber, ultramarine blue and white and we actually use gesso white for this. Additionally we'll need pencil, paintbrush, palette knife and water and a paper towel. All very important. These are the minimum of what you'll need. So since we don't have black as you may have noticed we're going to use burnt umber and ultramarine blue. And when we mix them, make sure that we mix them together and we really want to mash it together so that it becomes a pure black. And obviously white is pretty pure. So uh, on the piece of paper that I gave you all, I want you to make the end of each one of these three bars pure white. So you really don't have to do anything there. Just paint in the white. Notice that when I'm painting with the brush I'm actually dragging away from the tip. Um, and this is also a really good exercise activity uh, in uh, figuring out how to use the brush and how to be as specific as possible. There's our water. Clean it off. Maybe use a paper towel to dry it off. Now we're going to get into that black paint that we just mixed up and go to the other side. I'm going to speed this up for you black, there's black. So we've done three that are exactly the same. And now since we're making a fairly neutral gray, and you'll notice that I'm actually mixing with the brush here, and that's totally fine. And on the top bar, you're going to make a very neutral middle gray. It doesn't have to be perfect, but it should be something where it doesn't lean more towards absolute black, and it doesn't lean more towards absolute white. Once you've done that, add a little bit of white to it. I am still mixing with the brush. I'm going to come up with a lighter version. And as you can imagine, after I do this, I'm going to do add a little bit more black to it to see if I can find a value that is in between the middle gray and the black. And there we go. So now we have our first value study. And with this second version, I want to actually use either ultramarine blue or burnt umber to make my gray cooler. So I'm going to add blue to the middle gray and work this from side uh, to the white side to be a lighter gray blue. So this is how um, we make the temperature change of a gray. We add a little bit more blue to it. And it's just subtle, but oftentimes we need to have this sort of control and understanding of what we're doing. Likewise, as before, we're going to have a gray, a cool gray that's in between middle gray and white. And then we will add a little bit more um, of the black to get our neutral to be a darker cool gray. As we think down to the bottom value scale, that one will be warmer. And that's, this one will just have a little bit more of the, um, the brown in it, the burnt umber. So that's our value scale. The top ones are neutral, white on one end, the black, which is a combination of ultramarine blue and burnt umber. And then we have underneath that a cooler value scale. and then a warmer value scale. Now we're going to get into the color wheel. And I've marked off the color wheel for you there and with some notches and just draw the lines through it so that we have equal pie pieces. From here we are going to divide each pie piece into three as you get closer to the center. There you have it. Let's find out what our primary colors are. They are red. Move around the wheel. Then they're orange, uh, yellow and blue. So I'm going to take my pure red and that's going to be on the outermost ring. Add white to it. This is called a tint. And then we're going to add black to it, which is why we learned how to mix all those colors before of the black, white, and grays. And this is going to be called a shade. If we were to mix the red with 
gray, it would be called a tone. So we're going to do the, the same activity with all of these pieces of the pie with our primary colors. Now we're moving on to blue. So we have ultramarine blue, and then we've added white, and then we've added black. Then we move on to yellow. We do the same thing there. We add a little white to it. I have sped this up, so this is super fast to how long it'll actually take you. And then the interesting thing with yellow and black is it actually makes a green color. Now we move on to orange, green, and violet as our secondary colors. And so secondary colors are colors that are obtained by mixing two primary colors, this one being red and yellow. So as we did before, we are doing a tint and a shade. Then in between the red and the orange is a tertiary color, and that is going to be red-orange. I wonder where they came up with that name. So adding white and adding black. Now we're coming up with yellow-orange. I will tell you a tip for yellow. Uh, when you use it, you'll oftentimes need to add more yellow than, let's say, the red in this case, because yellow is a fairly weak color in terms of moving it. Now we'll combine ultramarine blue and red and get violet, a little white as our tint, and then a little black as our shade. You'll see that this activity will repeat as we go around the color wheel. I'm going to go with blue-violet there, a little white for our tint, a little black for our shade. This color wheel will actually operate as a bit of a, a cheat sheet for when we're getting into painting. You can have this by your side, and if you label it well, and you're trying to locate a color that's in front of you that is giving you some problems for how it comes to be and how it's made, then you can always refer to this. Now, it's not always going to be within this specific color wheel. Oftentimes, people might use different kinds of red or different kinds of yellow or different kinds of blue to create a color wheel and we'll talk about that later. But this is a very basic color wheel that should look very familiar, but also help us out as we uh, make our way through paintings. Add a little bit more to that shade to make it a little bit darker. There we go. And one last piece of the pie, which is our blue-green. And there you have it. I recommend labeling it so that you can have this, like I said, as a cheat sheet for how you made the colors that are in your color wheel and your value scales. Red, blue, and yellow primary. Secondary are orange, green, and violet. Sorry that got cut off. And then here are the tertiary colors. They are the in-between ones. And there you have it. There is our color wheel.